get it, friend. Some days life can really be challenging. But today, I want to encourage you that you are not walking alone. I love seeking to embody the idea of life on life discipleship as just one gospel friend walking another gospel friend until they get home. I'm your host, Karen Hodge, and you're listening to the Encouraged Podcast. So let's take a walk together. Welcome back, friends. We are we have a returning guest who has been very popular here on the Encouraged Podcast. Her name is Elizabeth Turnage. Welcome back, Elizabeth. Thanks, Karen. Glad to be back. We're glad to have you anytime. And I'd love for everybody to know a little bit about who you are, where you live, and and maybe one simple joy that God gave you during the pandemic. Yeah, well, I live in Pensacola, beautiful Pensacola, Florida, the gorgeous Gulf Coast, not on the beach. Um, And I am a writer and a Bible study teacher and a gospel coach and have a wonderful husband that I've been married to for almost 39 years and four adult children and three of them have spouses. So we were all nine just together last week out at the beach and um one of the simple joys in the pandemic is re- really related to that. We, because kids were able to work remotely, we were able to be together more at our house as a family. They kind of would all come down. And so uh, I really enjoyed that. That time is unlike any other to, to get to be together. And we probably won't have it like that again. So. Well, I often say full heart, full home, right? When everybody yes. gets there and uh, if you have yeah. food, if you've made your Costco run and you have Wi-Fi, then hey, come on. <laughs> that's, that's right. That's great. I love it. Uh, well, we are talking uh, today and we're walking today. We are a part of an eight week series uh, today. This episode is about walking each other home, which is just another way to talk about discipleship, that we're walking alongside one another until we get to heaven And we're going to intentionally invite you to listen to these podcasts with a friend. So share this podcast, make a time maybe to meet over coffee, take a walk, um, maybe talk on the phone together. We're going to have walking together questions that you can download on the Encourage website. But today we're going to take a walk with Elizabeth. And she is a gospel coach. I mean, who doesn't need a gospel coach in their life, right? Uh, We're going to walk specifically, though, today and chat about what it looks like to walk each other home as a compassionate caregiver. And I don't care what age you are, that as you listen out there, probably you have some aspect in your life that revolves around caregiving. So let's talk about that. There's just a lot of different kinds of care, right, Elizabeth? There's generational caregiving that we can talk about. There's circumstantial caregiving that we can talk about. Um, What are some key things we should remember as we step towards those who need care in our life? Well, as I think about that, Karen, you're so right. There's so many different circumstances and seasons, and I'm coming at it maybe more from the standpoint of, you know, caregiving in a health crisis. But many of these thoughts would apply to all sorts of caregiving. Also, a reminder that we probably all know a caregiver if we're not a caregiver of someone in Um, some kind of health crisis. But one of the things that I've been realizing recently is how much we need to pray for and ask about the needs of the person that we're caring for. Because sometimes we too quickly assume that we know what they need, but we're really just thinking about what we think they need or what we want for them, what allows us to keep control. So, An example of this would be when my dad was in the latter stages of prostate cancer and his cancer began to spread to his bones. And we were concerned about him falling because he had um, cancer in his hips. And so we acted very quickly to move him out of his home where he lived alone and to move him into assisted living. We were prioritizing his safety. And here's the thing. Safety is a good thing, but sometimes we make it an ultimate thing and we don't consider the whole picture of of what God 
would want for this person, of what this person wants and needs as they um, battle an illness. So that's that's one aspect of uh, that I've really been learning about is to pray about and think about what the person's needs are that we are caring for. Right. And, and, and sometimes when we help people or care for people, we care for them and help them in the way we would want to receive that. Right. So therein lies some of the disconnect. (laughs) Oh, like actually pray, like how help me Lord, help this person or care for this person in a way that would be actually compassionate and actually helpful. But I like what you just said. Uh, Sometimes we can make whatever it is, wholeness, safety, you know, um, you know, what, what, fill in the blank of whatever it is that you want to, your goal is in caring for the person. We make it ultimate, you know, and where, where it may just be something that's good. And, right. and so, I mean, I think when that, at least when that happens in my life, a lot of times, um, I am so consumed by that, 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 that I lose the compassion along the way. Yes. And that's the, that would be another aspect that I would say we need to pray for is compassion for that person to think about how would Jesus tend to the needs of this person? Um, Again, particularly with, you know, if you're dealing with generational caregiving, Uh, you know that an aging parent has really lost their vision and should not be driving and they they are driving. So it's it's very difficult. We need a lot of patience or they are, you know, your loved one isn't taking their medication the way they're supposed to. So again, in the health situations, but that applies for whoever we're caring for to have the compassion and the patience that for particularly for those things that tend to, to make us feel anxious and out of control, maybe. Right. And understanding the relational dynamics, as you say, in other words, there's a way that I could maybe possibly care for my parent. I want, I'm, but I'm still their child. So, yeah. it, so I, I'm trying to, to honor my parents, to love my parents, but I'm also their child and I may be the caregiver. And so what are the relational dynamics there yes. so that the, if the, if the relational part is really the ultimate part, like that's the eternal part, then not getting lost in some of the good things or the lesser things right. is what I'm hearing you say. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. Well, sometimes we walk alongside people for a season and then there's sometimes we're signing up for what we think is a season and it's really a long haul. Like it's going to be a long time. And um, that means that there's a lot of ambiguity. There's a lot of uncertainty. Um, so talk to us a little bit, Elizabeth, about understanding how we live in the tension that God is infinite in his care, but but we're finite. Right. Right. Oh, I'm so glad you said that, Kieran, about being finite. Uh, I read a book by a secular author, but great book called Being Mortal, Atul Gawande. And he, you know, he just reminds us that that we are mortal. Well, we as Christians, we we know that our time on this earth has an end. So so let's start, let's think about these, you know, this tension of the infinite and the finite and the uncertainties and the certainties. There's there's tons of uncertainties when you're taking care of someone, especially when it's a long haul um, or a very complex situation. But what we do know as Christians is the end of the story. And I was reading Dr. John Dunlop wrote a book called Finishing Well to the Glory of God. And he quoted C.S. Lewis from The Last Battle. So I'm going to read this little little sliver of The Last Battle. Spoiler alert for those of you who haven't finished Chronicles of Narnia <laughs> or who haven't finished the Bible. Um, here's what Lewis wrote. All their life in this world and all their adventures in Narnia had only been the cover and the title page. Now, at last, they were beginning chapter one of the great story, which no one on earth has read, which goes on forever, in which every chapter is better than the one before. So if we start with that certainty, we know the end of the story. We know that it's good. 
then that helps us walk into the uncertainties. And again, from a from a healthcare perspective, should I take my loved one to the ER right now? Should we agree to this surgery that the doctor is recommending, even though she's near the end of her life? Should we try this program or that program to help with this disability? There's so many questions that we really don't know the right answer to. We can pray. We can seek help from those who have walked before us. We can educate ourselves as Christians about the end of life and make advanced directives. But at the end of the day, in those uncertainties, we have to know, we have to remember the end of the story and that God is ruling over all. We serve a sovereign Lord who loves us and loves our loved ones even more than we do. And that's that's what helps me when I'm in that very difficult spot. And what you're saying, too, is daily grace, Elizabeth. In other mm-hmm. words, because yeah. as, as Jesus tells us in the Sermon on the Mount, tomorrow has enough trouble of its own. So like today, we just stay in today and he gives us what we need. He knows what we need, and and he he can equip us to do what he calls us to do. He always does that, and yet, you know, a lot of times in caregiving, there's like this steep learning curve because we're like, I don't know what I don't know because this is all uncharted territory for me, and because of that, sometimes we can become isolated, mm-hmm. um, and and. You know, I've heard sometimes people might say, well, this woman used to be involved in women's ministry, but she's not anymore. And then Uh, then if you ask a follow up question, well, like what's going on in her life? Well, it might be that she's a primary caregiver for someone. And it's not that she doesn't want to participate in women's ministry. It's that she can't participate in women's ministry right right now. And yet women's ministry might look like instead of looking like a program, which that's not really what our goal is, is moving towards the person. So like, how can we think about our involvement in community when we have caregiving as a regular part of our life? It's so important. It's so important, Karen, because you're right that isolation is, is, just very common for caregivers. And if you think about the fact that if somebody is really serving as a caregiver pretty full time, then uh, studies have shown that the it's a chronic stress situation akin to war, to being in a war. So that kind of, you know, that kind of gives us an idea of what, what they're dealing with. And then what begins to happen is um, caregivers can begin to think that and I mean, and this is true for all types of caregiving, we can think that we are the only one who can take care of our loved one. Even, even a, a, you know, a new mom with her new baby can, can think that, but, you know, especially when there's a health issue and then we start to cancel outside activities and that's where the isolation can begin. So that's where the church, the community, like you're saying, you know, instead of saying, Oh, she hadn't been here. Think about why hasn't she been here and could there be something going on? And so to reach out to that person and and find out uh, one of the biggest needs for most primary caregivers is to get away. Um, the, The biggest need for most primary caregivers, which is just a very practical thing, is their own health care. So, again, studies have shown that for primary caregivers in a long-term situation, they tend to neglect their own health care. They neglect their own medical appointments because they don't think they can leave it. You can see the, the cycle and it's not pretty. So um, we as the church have such an opportunity to move in, as you're saying, and serve. Yeah, and to maybe alleviate something or give them some respite so they could go to the doctor or or just sit with a loved yeah. one. Um, I appreciate so many of the things you said, and uh, we're actually going to link you in the show notes to an article that Elizabeth just wrote for us on the Encourage blog about self-care and caregiving. And and so as the church, we have this privilege of coming alongside the people who come alongside other people. And so a lot of it is just, at least for me, it's like prayer that the Lord would open my eyes Help me to listen to what people are saying. Help me to notice when they're not there, and and then and then also trying to 
to ask questions of how we can come alongside people, um, which which requires like our feet to like actually move towards them <laughs> instead yes. of expecting them to come to us and tell us what how we can help them. So anyway, that's just that's just I'm just rehearsing what I've learned over the years, but uh, or still learning over the years, I should say. Well, um, you've mentioned this already, but this idea that, of course, we're talking about walking each other home. Now, especially if we're caring for someone, perhaps someone who, like a parent, an aging person or somebody who's sick, who might be uh, closer to home than we even know, uh, what are like one or two ways God has comforted you as you've tried to comfort others, as you've been a caregiver, specifically when you think about keeping your eyes on the end of the story? Like, how does that help you hold it all in tension of where you are, but also where we're going? Yeah. Uh, there are so many ways. God has been so kind. This l- last several years has, has been a, you know, a season of loss. I've lost both of my parents and yet through that loss and that grief, God keeps directing me through again, through community, through good friends who are there to, um, to just, walk alongside, sit alongside to be with me and grief. Um, but also God keeps pointing me to passages in the, in the book I just wrote from recovery to restoration. It was all about the fact that, you know, in the Bible, we see uh, lots of people who don't necessarily uh, get you know, that, that thing that they wanted, or that they have a lot of losses. Moses does not get to enter the promised land. And Paul lives with that thorn in the flesh. So we don't see recovery or happy endings to every story in the Bible. Uh, David loses his son that he had with Bathsheba. So we could go on and on with that. But we do know that the day of restoration is coming and it's it's like god just keeps pulling you know lifting my head to say look to the horizon you know look to this day when there will be no more illness there will be no more caregiving there won't be any caregivers when jesus returns that day when everything sad will come untrue we just can't live in the pain of this fallen world unless we are able to hold at the same time the joy and the good news that not only has God come and begun, you know, redeemed and saved us through Jesus, but he is making us new. And one day, uh, one day it will all be so good. (laughs) So that's, that's my comfort. Yes, that we live in this, you know, this radical in between this where he is actually making things new present tense, but he will make all things new in the future as well. And and that gives us hope and grace to persevere, especially when we're going through these longer seasons of caregiving. Um, and I you said it in what you just you you actually demonstrated it. I can watch you on video, <laughs> but as you said, lifting our eyes, you li- we lift our eyes. And so that's the perspective changer. I think when we can lift our eyes and see the bigger picture of what God is doing, we may think it's just an illness or, you know, a, a, a an unexpected trial that has thrust us into caregiving, but God is doing so much more than we, what we can see. Yeah. And we get to participate with that as we walk alongside other people. It really is a precious privilege. Well, you and I neglected, we neglected to talk about your books up front, but this is a great place to bring it in. Tell everybody a little bit about The Waiting Room and uh, Recovery to Restoration um, and really how that can be a help to caregivers. Um, Oh, yeah. Well, both of them. So The Waiting Room, I wrote, it. the subtitle is 60 Meditations for Finding Peace and Hope in a Health Crisis. And I wrote that, out of a caregiving season with my father and with our youngest son when he was diagnosed with a brain tumor and just sat there in the waiting room and thought about all these people who, if they didn't have the hope of Christ, I don't know how they were walking through the days. So that is that one. And then the follow-up is from recovery to restoration. And that's same subtitle, um, but for finding peace and hope in crisis. So a lot of people who read the waiting room have just 
kind of continued on, but it's, it's that I, it's really wanting to draw people even in the midst of recovery or crisis toward the hope of restoration. And that, as you said, that that God is at work right now, restoring broken things. And one day that work will be completed when his kingdom is consummated. So well, two of these two books from Elizabeth are true gifts. Um, think about, okay, you're in the midst of caregiving. Do you have a lot of time to read anything? No. Okay. Uh, are you probably going to be like on the go, like, cause you're going to doctor's appointments and you will need a book that will actually fit down in your purse that you can, you can read something really quickly or listen to something that she's suggested. And it's a phenomenal book only, not only for caregivers, but if, if you're thinking, I don't know how to help my friend uh, come alongside the person who comes alongside, I, I'm really going to highly recommend, we'll link you in the show notes to grab these books. Maybe you can go through them together, but also just something that she can quickly slip down in a bag because she's going to be on the go. And um, it's going to just be a nugget of encouragement to continue to be a caregiver. So. Great things. Good. Well, you have been embodying this all along, Elizabeth, as we've been talking of bringing the hope of the gospel to the hearts of women. And that's the privilege that we have as we walk alongside one another until we get home. But walking implies steps. So like what would be one small step that we could take this week to move towards someone who maybe needs care in our life? Um, and, and that takes courage sometimes. So so what's one small step we could take? Well, I was thinking about this in terms of if you're the caregiver, I so encourage you to take Jesus up on his invitation to come to him and rest and take advantage, as we've been talking about, of your community to do that. Um, He says, all you who are weary and heavy laden, come to me and I will give you rest. If you're not a caregiver, I still give you the same encouragement to take that step, to take him up on the invitation. And if you're uh, not in a caregiving season, to seek out a caregiver to encourage and walk alongside of the way, you know, we've been talking about that we we need to remind ourselves, as you said, Karen, to open our eyes and and look out for those people who who might need us to come alongside and bear their burdens with them. Yeah, what a privilege to be able to do that. And I, I appreciate you taking us right to the heart of Jesus Christ. Uh, where he describes his nature there in Matthew 11. Um, and it, and I also love the part of that verse that says, and come and learn from me. In other words, this yes. is kind of like a school a class that we didn't think we were going to sign up for caregiving uh, and, or, or, and the weariness and the heavy ladenness that comes along with all of the ambiguity and the unknowns and, and the loss that we've been talking about today. But he promises us to meet us there and that, that that rest that we receive from him is a certain thing. Absolutely. It's a blessing. Mm. So thank you so much for reminding me what's true today as a gospel coach and a gospel. Friend, Elizabeth. <laughs> it's always a joy to be with you. Thanks for taking a walk with us today. Thanks, Karen. So fun to be here. Always a joy. Listen, I don't know where you are, who the Lord has entrusted to, to your care in your life. It might be a parent. It might be a child. It might be someone in your congregation who is struggling right now. But may you image Christ and move towards people. As we see Jesus doing in the Gospels, take one small step this week as we rest in him, but we also go and we, we also go and to, to extend the compassion of Jesus Christ to those who are weary, wounded, sick, and sore. Uh, It is our tremendous privilege. So walk that out this week, and we hope you'll tune back in next week to the Encourage podcast. You know, every walk begins with one small step of faith. So I encourage you to share this podcast with a friend, set a time to connect over this content, download our Walking Together questions, and let's step out in faith to grow together. Thanks for listening to the Encourage podcast, where we have one aim, to bring the hope of the gospel to the hearts of women. We love connecting people to people and people to resources. So check out our show notes to connect to today's guest, download the Walking Together questions, and find out how we can stay connected on social media. The Encourage Podcast is a production of CDM, the discipleship ministry of the PCA.